Hey guys, welcome back to Just Fixing Garage. I'm Justin. I'm sitting inside a 2012 Chevy Sonic with a 1.8 liter. It's having some some issues uh, running. It's running really rough. Uh, essentially coming in shaking and the uh, check engine lights blinking. So we're gonna take a look at it and uh, show you what's wrong. All right, first things first. So again, it's 2012. Uh, it is a 1.8 liter Chevy Sonic and uh, the check engine lights on and we have a P0300 I don't know how well you'll be able to see that uh, P0300 essentially uh, engine misfire detected and it's random so it can be multiple cylinders it could be one cylinder uh, I was trying to get it to run a little more to give me an idea on what a specific cylinder is being an issue uh, this does have a single coil pack that goes to all four so um, anyway so that's our thing we have a misfire I'm going to show you how it's running. I'm not going to run it long because it is running very rough. So it's just got general shaking. I bet the check engine light will start blinking here in a minute. Well, you, can, you can tell just by the shaking that it's not running really good. So I'm not going to keep running it. Uh, they drove it here as it was. And check engine light is blinking. So I'm going to turn it off. But we've got a serious issue. It's, you know, and when you have a misfire, it's usually, you know, compression, air, fuel, spark, whatever it might be. I'm going to show you what to check first. I've already got a diagnosis of what's wrong, but let me show you what I found on ours, and hopefully it's the same issue for yours. All right, guys, so first things first, you're going to need to pop your hood. You're going to want to do a visual inspection of a few things. It's going to require maybe one or two tools to do it. Uh, first, let's just pop off our cover here. This is covering our coil. And this coil here is a single coil that goes to all four plugs. So I think it goes one, two, three, four. Sometimes it goes like one, three, four, two, whatever it might be. Uh, and we're going to be taking these off. These two Torx heads, I believe I have the size over here. Uh, for us, we used a T40 to get these out. If you don't have a set of these, go pick them up. They're really cheap. I, buy, I bought a set on Amazon. I talk about it in all my videos. But we'll take these out. And then there is usually a clip on this. I don't know if it's been out before or what, but the clip is, is broken. Um, it's on there all the way, so I don't think that's really causing any problems. Um, but, you know, make sure you get yours off of there. Now I'm going to finish taking these off completely. And we're going to do a couple things. We're going to look at our spark plug uh, tubes to see if there's a lot of oil leaking down in there. I see a lot of oil remnants in here, but that's probably because this is a really bad design you put oil in here and if it leaks or you overfill it it spills into your uh, spark plug uh, channel which is not the smartest thing in the world but you know it is it is what it is so I'll get this off and then we'll follow up so First thing you can do since you just pulled this out is take a look and see if you see any sparking or like burns where something is uh, arcing. Let me get my bolts out of here. And also you want to check these for any deformities. So over time uh, this can get brittle and crack. You just want to kind of start, move your hand around, see if anything's moving around. You can also pull these boots off, but before you do that you can just move them around a bit. These are all solid. Uh, up, except for this one. So, you see I actually have a lot of play in this, um, and it looks a little deformed from the other ones. It's kind of hard to tell, but it definitely has an arch to it, which makes me think that it's cracked inside of there. I saw that on a few other videos, and that seems to be pretty common. So let me pull that boot off of here, and we'll see, uh, see what it looks like under there. Alright, so uh, it looks like we've got a broken bit in there, which can definitely be causing some arcing issues and misfires. So if you see something like that, it is probably time to replace it. Oh, check that out. So if you look, we can actually see, I didn't even notice this, this entire thing is brittle and cracked. Um, I had a feeling this coil was going bad when I could see that was deformed, but it looks like this one is arcing. It's likely overheating. It could even be following the line up 
Uh, but this one is definitely a problematic because the spark can travel through some of this and, and cause it to arc uh, if it's not channeling properly there. So I think we definitely have an issue here that is worth replacing before we do anything else. I will say, you know, something else to check is your spark plug uh, tubes. These two have a little bit of oil in them. Again, I don't know, it doesn't seem like it's wet. It just seems like old oil. So maybe it's burned off, maybe from filling up oil before it caused a spill. We're gonna change out these spark plugs as well while we're in here because, you know, why not? We wanna rule that out. And then I've still got pieces of that one in here. And this this definitely would cause a huge misfire issue if this thing is not properly going. And it's, it's just all cracked and deteriorated. Um, yeah, and I mean, like I said, it's cracked all the way up to here. And I just pulled this out. So it doesn't take much. If it's arcing inside the motor, uh, it's going to uh, definitely cause some headaches. And it was this cylinder in question. So anyway, let me show you the new parts, guys, and then we'll uh, pull the spark plugs and get it done. All right. So when I can, I try to stick OEM. <clears throat> Uh, for the GM parts, that's used the AC Delco. So for the spark plug, we're using the AC Delco 41-122. You only need four of them. They're about 10 bucks a piece. For the coil, I got a direct GM part as well. So this is the AC Delco. See this. Much better shape, brand new. I think the part number is 2518-6687. It's on there a few, few times, but uh, we picked it up from AutoZen. They were able to get it for us the next day. And let's just do a quick inspection. You can see all these are straight. They look good. Uh, there's no play like the other one. Nothing's broken. And you can see they're already pre-lubed up with some dielectric grease. So that should be good to go. So the next step is I'm going to pull the spark plugs out, put the new ones in. These are pre-gapped. You don't have to gap them. And then hopefully we'll throw it back together and this will run good. All right, guys, getting the old spark plugs out. Looks like it's going to be a 5 8 You're going to need at least one extension to get down in there. And we'll go through and we'll pull these. Alrighty, that one looks pretty, pretty dirty. I'm gonna go through. Oh look, it looks like it's got part of my socket on there. Give me just a second. There we go. All right, move on to the next one. You can kind of see them already loose, which is probably a good thing for me. I always get nervous these things are going to get seized up in there. I've only broken one spark one in my life. And in here, it looks like they have iridium uh, plugs, but not AC Delco. So apparently these have been changed at some point. But they didn't go with the OEM option, which is strange because honestly, it's not that much more to go OEM. And you know, they guarantee these plugs for like 100,000 miles. There's no reason not to stick with them. I need to get myself a little electric ratchet. That's three of four. Let's get the last one out. Yeah, they all don't seem very tight. Not that these are supposed to be super tight anyway. Okay, that's all four out. Some look better than the other than the others. I think that first one I pulled out is from all that arcing. It doesn't seem seems like it's the worst one. All right, so before I put the new plugs in, I'm going to get some anti seize. That's how I like it. So I'm going to use some aluminum anti-seize. Just going to put it on the new threads just for peace of mind that they're not going to get stuck in there. Again, you don't have to gap these. You've seen me do some Chevy ones before. Really, you don't need much of this stuff. That's it. So what you're going to want to do is put it inside the socket. You don't want to just drop it in the hole in case you bend it. You can take it off of your ratchet and just slowly guide it in until you line up. You want to get it all started by hand. You shouldn't have any resistance. You want it to bottom out by hand. Just 
And I'm just gonna get these kind of started. I'm gonna come back and torque down to spec because I do have my torque wrench ready. So uh, for now, I'm just gonna get all these going and then I'll show you guys in just a minute. We'll go back and torque them. My problem is my little rubber piece from my socket that holds the spark plug keeps getting stuck on them. So I gotta keep pulling them off, but it's all right. And keep going. Like I said, I keep putting anti-seize on all the new ones. Peace of mind for me. Not every place does that, but uh, it makes me feel better that whoever does this in five years or so doesn't have any problem. One more, and we're going to torque them all. All right, guys, I look at the torque spec. It is 18 foot pounds which is what I have this set to. It's really not much. That's it. That's it. That's it. Doesn't take much. That's 18. All right. Just a quick follow up, guys. We've gotten all the spark plugs out. We replaced them with the AC Delco 41 122. Got them all torqued down to 18 foot pounds. Everything went in there nice and clean. Make sure that none of your rubber booties are stuck on the spark plugs because mine kept coming off my socket and I had to use my pliers to keep taking it off. Uh, next is going to be putting the spark plug ignition coil back on, plugging it up, and then seeing how it runs. Hopefully it runs a lot better. So let me grab that and put it on. All right, I got the new coil, the 25186687. We're just going to drop that into place. Going to have to push back on our plug a little bit as we do it. Doing this kind of one-handed, so bear with me. It should sit pretty flush. We'll put our plug on. It should seat in there pretty good. All right, let me get my bolts so we can get them started. I right, set them right here. You want to make sure this is pushed down all the way before you start tightening these because if not you'll somewhat crack it so just make sure that's good i know i've got to push this on a little more sorry you're not seeing it this plug's got to go on just a little bit more it's just uh really good snug i'll make sure that's good fortunately like i said that clip is broken so we need to be very aware of that i may have to do a zip tie or something or in the future if we have to we'll replace that but Generally, they, uh, they get brittle and stuff over time, and that's what causes them to break. So let me get my Torx head. There it is. I was wondering why I said it. This is, I think, again, a T40. I'll correct it if I am wrong. 
And you guys can get coils cheaper. I was talking to the person who needed this done. I was like, you can get really cheap coils. Uh, but when it comes to ignition and something really uh, important, like a car starting properly, you know, I generally try to go with OEM parts if they are okay with it. I'm okay with throwing doorman or auto light or whatever uh, they want on. But generally, I think it's best to stick with what the manufacturer did. This is a, you know, almost 10 year old car. And that part lasted that long. If you can get that much longer out of the new one, you might never be changing this again. So these, I just make pretty hand tight. You know, gotta go crazy. And again, we've got that fully seated on there. And we might be replacing that at some point. If it gives us problems, I don't think it will. I'm gonna clean up this workspace. Then we're gonna sit in the car and see how it runs. Hey guys, not sure if the other video came out here. There was a smudge on the lens. I just wanted to come back and say we started up. It ran rough for like, I don't know, 10 seconds. I'm thinking that had to do with a lot of excess fuel in the cylinder because essentially that plug was not firing. Um, and that seems like it's cleared out. The idling is great. It's idling at about eight to 900. I think that's really good. The throttle response, really good. It, it sounds good. I cleared the code, it didn't come back. Uh, just remember when the code was on, it was blinking. Meaning even if I cleared it, it would have came right back because it was an active code, active misfire. So I'd say this is fixed. Uh, if, uh, if you haven't already, please subscribe to the video. Uh, sorry, subscribe to the channel, like the video. It means a lot to me. Um, I have some videos of like 12, 13, 14,000 views, but that doesn't always correlate to subscribers. And just take that extra second, click the subscribe button. It helps me out a lot. I'm hoping to get to a thousand so I can like monetize a little bit because I actually pay for like my Adobe license and whatnot. And uh, you know, I make money working on the cars and helping people out, but hey, if any, anything extra in the bank helps. I'm sure uh, I can spend it on the kids. So thanks again, guys, and have a good one.